Python peeps, this is Prof G and welcome back to CircuitPython School. In this video we're going to make our CPB flash, but we'll also point out some gotchas that often trip up new programmers. These are things that I've seen after teaching coding to hundreds of students, and we'll start learning better coding techniques and practices. Now while we are going to get flashy with our CPB, we'll cover debugging using print statements, controlling blinking lights using the sleep function that's in the time library, and we'll learn how to use variables to write better, more readable, and more maintainable code. And we'll finish the video with the SOS challenge, which we'll solve at the start of the next video. So let's code. Now at the end of our last video, we had our lights shining in aqua and they were staying lit. But what if we want things to flash? Well, let's get flashy. Now we're going to deliberately do some things wrong at first, but that should help us get a good understanding of how our program executes. So we'll get to our blinky techno lights, but we'll take the scenic route to get there. Well, first, we've got the lights shining in a nice aqua color, and that's 0, 255, 255. Remember, these three numbers are the red, green, blue mix. 0 is no color, up to 255, which is the maximum, so we've got no red, but maximum green and maximum blue. But how would we use pixels.fill if we wanted to turn the lights off? Well, if the number represents the colors for R, G, and B, we could just set these three colors to zero so no light shines. So why don't we add another pixels.fill below this line? Remember, this means we're using the fill method on the pixels object. Methods or functions always have parentheses following them, and colors also have parentheses around them. So we have an additional parentheses on the inside, and inside this set of parentheses, we'll put zero, comma, zero, comma, zero. Now let's press the save button and see how things look. And whoa, we see a brief flash of aqua and the lights go off. We can click save again to re-execute. And yep, we see the quick flash again. Now that's not surprising at all because if we take a look at our code executing from the top, we turn things aqua and then immediately turn all the lights off. And then we enter the infinite loop where we pass on doing anything else. By the way, I'm gonna click serial to open the serial console. It's always best to click save with serial console open because that'll tell you if you have any errors. So I'll click save again. We're not getting any errors. Same result as we had before. Well, what if we want to flash aqua on and off? Well, let's try cutting these two pixels.fill lines here, and instead we'll paste them inside of the while true loop so they repeat over and over again, going from aqua to no light, aqua to no light. That sounds like that might work. So with these two lines cut out, I'm going to paste them over this pass command here and look at the format. Now this is bad and a source of common newbie error. Do you know why? Now remember, the while true is an infinite loop and it repeats everything that's indented over and over again. But this last line is not indented. It's flush left even with while true. So we're never going to reach this line. Watch what happens when we click save. We turn aqua and we stay aqua. We never reach the fill 000 line because we continue to loop around re-executing only those statements that are indented under while true, which is just this one line here that turns things aqua. Here's another example. These two lines indented after the while true will execute over and over again in an infinite loop, and we'll never reach this print statement at the end. Now here's another tip for you. Savvy programmers use print statements liberally while they're coding to make sure they understand what's happening with the flow of control in their program, and they use this for debugging. Enter a print statement in your code, and if you see it printing out in the serial console, you know you reached that point. If you don't see it, you know your code never reached that point. So what we're going to do is we're going to insert two print statements. We'll put one print statement before the while true loop here. I'll say print. This is our first print statement. And then I'm going to put a second print statement after this pixels.fill000. And I'll say print. This is the print statement after while true. Now if we save and run, look what happens down here in the console. We see that it says this is our first print statement, showing that, yep, we executed this statement in line 7, but we know we've never executed this statement in line 13 because the serial console never says this is the print statement after while true. So, aha, we verified what was happening. Why don't we just go ahead and indent this fill 000, and since we're done understanding how the code executes, we can get rid of these two print statements. Let's see if this works. So we'll save to re-execute, and I see a flash when the program starts, but I don't see the pixels blanking out with 000. Well, what's going on here? Well, we are switching from aqua to off, but the execution of the program, even inside of our inexpensive CPB, is very, very fast. So fast that we can't even detect the lights going off. It looks like they're constantly on. And how can we verify this is what's happening? You guessed it. We can use print statements. So let's add a print statement after fill 0255255 that says print aqua, so we know we're hitting that line, and another one after fill 000 that says off. Verifying that we've hit that line, let's save and run, and we're hitting both of these lines super, super fast. We'll hit Control-C to stop this. 
and so we're giving the commands to turn the lights on and off. We just like to pause a bit between the flashing, and we need a way to tell our program to wait a little bit of time before executing the next statement. Well, there is a command to do this. It's in a new library called time, so we have to import time. We always do our imports at the top of our code, and the command is sleep. So down here after print aqua, I'm going to say time to go into the time library, and then say dot using dot notation to grab the sleep function in the time library. Now all functions have an open and close parenthesis, and inside these two parentheses, we're going to put in a decimal value representing the time in seconds that we want to wait. So if we want to wait half a second, we'll say 0.5 then save and see how this works and it's still no good maybe the lights are flickering a tiny bit but they still pretty much look like they're on well there is a clue down in the serial monitor you can tell things are printing off but we're printing aqua waiting half a second then you see off really quick and aqua again can you recognize the problem and think up a solution why don't you pause if you need to think for a bit and let's see if this is what you came up with the problem is we're waiting half a second after turning the lights aqua, but then we immediately turn the lights off and then loop around to the beginning of the while true loop where we turn the lights aqua, we wait half a second, so we never have a pause with the lights off. That's why it looks like the lights are constantly aqua. So how would we fix that? Well, we just need to pause after we turn the lights off. So I'm just going to copy this time sleep statement here. I'm going to paste it after we turn the lights off and we print off. And now let's save and run. And this looks perfect. We're getting the flashing we wanted with our lights filling in aqua for half a second and then turning off for half a second. So hopefully that scenic route illustrated how to use print statements to identify and diagnose problems. And you now feel confident enough to use print statements if you ever run into problems in your own code. Now let's look at writing better code so we can introduce better habits right at the start of our CircuitPython journey. Now our code has a bunch of numbers in it. Now we know those numbers represent the red, green, blue values for our colors. But if you come back to this code in a few months or if somebody else uses your code, it might not be clear that 0255255 is aqua. Entering values directly into our code like this is called entering literal values. But it's considered to be better practice to instead assign these literal values to a variable that has a name that's easier to recognize, then use that variable name throughout your code. Let's make some changes to our code to show how to do this and why it's a better practice. Let's create a variable before we hit our while true loop called aqua, and we'll enter that value in all caps, and we'll set that equal to, remember, colors are inside of parentheses, and the color is 0, 255, 255. Now remember what we said in the earlier video, it's good practice to fully capitalize any values that are going to remain unchanged and the color aqua is always going to be these three numbers and that should never change for the duration of the program so that's why I chose all caps here. Now that aqua in all caps is equal to in parentheses 0, 255, 255 I'm going to cut out this inner set of parentheses with the numbers in them from this first pixel dot fill and I'm going to replace that with aqua and watch what happens with code completion when I start to type capital A Moo says, hey, I know something that begins with capital A, it's aqua. If there were multiple values that began with capital A, it would show you those options in here as well. So you can highlight the word aqua and press tab or return, and Moo can finish typing in aqua for you. Now it's totally fine to type in those four letters, but it's nice to know once you've defined a variable, that will be part of code completion, and over time, you'll start to expect values to show up in code completion. And if they don't show up, that might tip you off that there's an error in your code someplace or that you're about to type something with the wrong spelling. And since my code's working, I don't need these print statements anymore. And why don't we enter a similar color for, why don't we call 000 black? And I'll add black in the second pixels.fill. And actually, I have a typo here, and I'm going to leave it in so you can see the error that shows up. Now I'm going to press the save button and my CPB shuts off. That's one indication that I might have an error. Now remember, I told you that you should leave your serial console open because it'll tell you if you had an error and I did not leave my serial console open, so I'll open it now. Press save again. And if I scroll up, look at this statement here. It says that there's an error in line 15. Under that, it says syntax error, invalid syntax. Now syntax errors are like the grammar errors of coding, but although you can understand when someone is using bad grammar, Python doesn't understand bad syntax. It expects perfection. Now I'll give you an important heads up. Even though Python expects perfection, Moo isn't offering us perfection. It's actually wrong. The problem isn't in line 15, it's actually in line 14. So that's another important tip for you, and it's an issue that often trips up new CircuitPython programmers. If Moo reports an error, look at the line where it says the error occurs, but also check the lines above it. So why don't you pause here, take a good look at line 15, but I already gave it away. Also take a look at line 14, because that's where I told you the real error is, and see if you can tell what I did wrong and how you would fix it. 
And hopefully you can tell I left an extra open parentheses in here. You always need a matching set of parentheses, so you should never have an odd number of parentheses. Plus, I shouldn't have this extra parenthesis on the left-hand side because the black variable already has the parentheses that I need for color. So if I delete this extra paren, save it, run my code, I can see that it works fine. Now there's no changes in the execution of my code, but this is much easier to read. So one benefit of declaring variables at the top of your code and using these instead of sprinkling literals throughout your code is that code is easier to read and code that's easier to read is also easier to debug, maintain, and improve if you want to return to it at a later date. Now let's have another super quick challenge now that you know how to create variables and replace string literals so you can pause here. The challenge is to create a variable named flash underscore time and why don't you use lowercase snake case because it's possible you might want to change this value during the execution of your program. And this flash time variable should hold the value that you pass into time dot sleep that's currently 0 0.5 and then modify your code so that you use this new variable instead of the literal value for 0 0.5. So hopefully this was pretty straightforward for you. Rendered underneath where we created the black variable, we're going to create a variable called flash underscore time. That's lowercase snake case. We'll set that equal to 0 0.5. And then in the two places where I have time.sleep, I'm going to replace 0 0.5 with flash underscore time. Then let's click on save and see how things look. Nothing changes on our CPB, but here's where creating a variable like this can be really helpful. Now I'll change flash time to 0 0.1, save, and we have an ultra flash dance party light. But here's the real advantage. Instead of having to change time.sleep's value in two places, which I would have had to do if I still had the literal 0 0.5 in there, I just updated flash underscore time in one location, and that change was used in both of the locations where I used that variable. Now imagine that we had hundreds of lines where we were referring to the same flash time. So being able to update this in one place where we set up the variable is way more efficient than having to change a literal in hundreds of places. So an additional value of using variables instead of literals in your code is that you can make faster and more reliable changes. Now let me go back to half a second flash time. I'm an old man and those disco lights are too much for me. But here's another thing we can do. If we want to set our color to flash twice as long as the time when the lights are shut off, we can perform math on this variable too. So I'm going to multiply this value here where we set the flash time after we set the color to aqua and how to multiply this by two in Python and nearly all other computer languages as well as programs like spreadsheets. Multiplication is represented by the asterisk or the star. Now division is the slash while the plus character is plus and the minus character is minus. So in here I'm going to say star or asterisk two. Save again and look at this. We can clearly see that the lights are on for twice as long as they're shut off. Nice work. Now I'm going to leave you with one more challenge to solve, and we'll show you the solution to this challenge at the start of the next video. This is the SOS challenge. So what you want to do is to get your CPB to flash, giving an SOS signal in Morse code. And you've probably seen this in movies. SOS is the distress call. It's three short flashes that represents the letter S, three long flashes that represents the letter O, and then you repeat the S again. Three short, three long, three short. Morse code can be sounds as well as flashes, but we haven't learned sounds yet, so just focus on the flashes. Here's another example of SOS via YouTube video. And notice you can speed up or slow down the signal, but the timing between the pulses and the spaces between the pulses remains the same. Now in this box on the left, these are the rules for Morse code. I got this from the University of Hawaii. The short flash is known as a dit. You'll see this represented as a dot, and that's one unit, so you can set the units however long you want. But then dos, or the dashes, need to be three units. The space between the dits and the dos within a letter, like dot 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 or dash dash dash, is one unit of silence, so the same length as a dit. Between the letters in a word are three units of silence, so there should be three units of silence between an S, an O, and an S. And then there should be seven units between the words, so when you restart SOS again, there should be another seven units. So the challenge is to write a CircuitPython program to flash SOS in red using these rules. Create a value named unit that sets the amount of time for the unit that you're using in your program. And then create additional variables to hold the values described on the left and name them as did underscore pause, da underscore pause, between dits and das, between letters pause, and between words pause. So create that SOS program, use these rules, use these variable names. Hopefully you can get this done, and we'll show the solution at the start of the next video. Keep at it, coder!